My name is Ming, I'm Star Master from Western Canada. You know, I was um, flying here and I was thinking, I checked the weather report and it says that uh, it's gonna rain, right guys? But look what happened today, the sun came out. Wow, so your city welcomed me with the nice beautiful sun so I can see how beautiful your city was. Yeah, so I mean, I'm very happy again and um, you know, I'm sorry, I wish I can speak, uh, is it Bahasa you guys speak? Yeah, you know, I, I heard your whole lecture here and I applaud all the wonderful speakers, by the way, all of you and also head office for arranging this. Because, you know, this reminds me a lot of when I first um, attended an anatomy seminar in Canada. Uh, I know many of you guys here, uh, actually, are all of you guys members here? Raise your hand if you guys are members. Oh, that's good. Okay, well, I see some does not. <laughs> but soon they will be, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, anatomy, I can tell you this. Um, I think many of you are enjoying anatomy because it is a very, very good company. I can tell you that. Because it's already in so many countries, 14 countries now, and there's more coming up soon. And to many of you, you, know, you might look at it that it's a great company and there's a lot of uh, business and then the journey, there's, everyone's telling you all their different roads of success and how you can succeed in it. You know, to me, I didn't focus on the business. So a lot of people in this company always actually wonder how a Canadian, to tell you the truth, how did a Canadian share to all different parts of the world? You know, that was actually a lot of people's dream, am I correct? But that dream actually led me to be going to different countries. So it's very unique. You know, I, I never I really came to Malaysia. I, I, my first time in Malaysia was, oh my gosh, I think it's um, over 25 years ago. You see how long that was? And I'll tell you guys this, Malaysia looks so different. Yeah. The food got even better. <laughs> and, and by the way, Kuching food is very good. <laughs> I had a great lunch today. Yeah, so I mean, you see how the world evolves. Many of us know things change. But if you guys don't do any change, what's going to happen? That's why Adam is very important. It comes into your life. But I'm going to tell you today a story about, you know, me and actually my wife. Do you guys want to hear the true story or based on the true story? True story. true story. Oh, my. You don't want to hear that spicy one, you know, the based on true story? No, right? <laughs> so I'll tell you this. You know, a lot of people ask this very, very wonderful question, which I'm very happy, is how did you become a speaker? I'll tell you this. I have no practice. I was literally thrown in, okay? I'm not kidding you. I still remember the first time I did MC for Atomy. You know how much notice I got? Take a guess. Nobody? One day? Yeah, that's very good. I wish I had that. <laughs> it was about two hours. Yeah, and that was my first time doing it. But you know, I thought it was, oh, it's okay. You know, I'm just helping them. So I didn't have that pressure. And from there, it led on to, you know, doing products, compensation plan, this and that, and then doing testimony, sometimes in front of 4,000 people, and it goes on and on and on. But you see, I'll give you a little secret, because I didn't think of it as business. That's why I didn't have that pressure. So going on stage, I really didn't have that stage fright. I look at all of you. To me, actually, I would like to meet all of you to have a chit chat. You know, we can talk about Atomy, how you guys are experiencing here, or I can talk, or you guys can tell me about how uh, all the beautiful things in Kaching, so I can learn about Kaching, right? So you see, um, for speaking wise, that was one wonderful thing that led on to so many different things in Atomy. Um, my wife, Rebecca, as you see on the picture there, she was actually a very good speaker. She has all the skills. I never had that. Uh, my background is actually, I'm in real estate investment. And I do it very good in Vancouver. How many of you guys heard of Vancouver? You guys have, right? Yeah, it's a beautiful city. Um, it's called beautiful BC. It's, lo it's um, well, 
I'll tell you this, it's become a very, very expensive city. Yeah, uh, I think recently they had a stat come out. Vancouver's ranked right after Hong Kong. Wow, I think that's scary, you know? Yeah, and it is scary. So I can tell you guys something very unique. Um, when I first joined Atomy, actually uh, a lot of people, especially people who were doing Atomy, they told me Atomy was actually very hard. See, it's different than here in Malaysia. Do you know why? Um, Atomy, you saw it there. Canada started in 2011. Am I right, guys? Okay. So when um, I'll join, uh, which I'll show you right now, my timeline, okay? So my wife joined in uh, 2015 in January. And it was actually because of somebody um, uh, told us uh, to make a donation for the travel kit. <laughs> so it wasn't even introducing Atomy to us. So we actually bought that, um, you know, made a donation, got that travel kit. And guess where that travel kit ended up? No, we didn't even use it. We, we were typical Canadians. <laughs> we make our donation, and then it went underneath the sink. <laughs> so it sat there for a while, and then one day, you know, oh, I think there was a travel kit down there. Maybe let's just dig it out and try it. So when we tried it, it was actually quite nice. Wow, interesting. This product's good. So from there, um, later on, uh, someone invited us to an Atomy one-day seminar. So my wife went, um, and then she tried it, and then she goes, hey, interesting, this company's got a pretty good concept and a lot of different products. But one problem is, I'll tell you this, in Western Canada, um, you know how here you guys got a lot of mastership, right? And people's always rising. When we joined, I think the highest level, I think I recall, was a diamond master, and she couldn't speak English, so we didn't understand a thing. And all the other people, the, there was only a few. When I said all the other people, it's not even my hand. That's how many there were, just sales masters. So from 2011 to 2015, you look at it, there wasn't very mastership. So what was the signal for telling you about Atomy in Canada? It was difficult. The reason why it's difficult, it's different than your country. You know, Canada is a very established country. Um, we are located in North America. So also, you know, being next door neighbor to the United States, it's the land of MLM. So every year, I tell you this, hundreds of MLM come onto the market. You know when there's so many MLMs, what happens? People are always interested in new ones, new ones, new ones, right? So it's harder, right, for those people who are interested in MLM. But actually for me and my wife, we've never joined any MLMs before. We have zero MLM experience. But again, when we started to try to share the company's products, we had encountered a lot of difficulty. You know, not even about direct sale or an MLM. When we try to promote a product, especially a product that was so low price, that was one of the biggest difficulty. You know, in North America, people are conditioned. You know that. We believe the well-named brands, the high price defines high quality, right? And actually, I think here in Malaysia, when I first came back many years ago, it was same, similar, right? But except it's more and more stronger in North America. So in that environment, when you try to promote Atomy, that was very, very hard. And many of us, you know, even me, uh, my wife, when we try to, you know, tell them about the good quality products, that was one of the biggest barriers because that refusal came so fast once you mentioned that price, that's it. They were gone. They disappeared. They were not even interested. We didn't even get a chance. So, you know, for us, uh, when we were starting Anatomy, we realized that how other people were starting. It was difficult. So as you can see on the timeline there, um, for the first couple of months, we weren't interested at all. You know, but then when we did get the flow, when there was actually the testimonial part, my wife started using the uh, skincare, so of course she's, you know, started looking better and better too, of course. Not that she's not. <laughs> and for me, I tell you this, I was like your typical husband, okay? 
Are there husbands and wives here, guys? Okay. So you see, you know, most husbands, you know, you're like, oh, okay, you know, just do the, that thing on yourself and don't bother me. <laughs> that was me. And for me, I like what I liked about the product was the um, shampoo. Wow, I used that shampoo. It really helped me. And I noticed my friends start noticing it. So the secret is in the products. You can do the business, I tell you. You can. But if you're not a, you're not a user of the product, no one's going to be believing in you. What we found is you have to be truthful in doing Atomy. You know, don't walk around doing lies. You know, that's not going to help you. But by being truthful, people know the truth. They'll feel the truth. So very, very, in a very short period of time, when we actually start focusing on it, my wife became a sales master. And as you see in the next timeline, it wasn't too long because we became a diamond master. But I know, I've seen Malaysia. I was here at your um, Success Academy. You know, you guys have a very fast record, I think, for the first star master. <laughs> I was here when I, when I saw the award ceremony. And then even Indonesia, I was there. And was it six weeks after the opening? And you got a lot of Sharon Rose Master. Wow, a whole flock of them. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> so, you know, different country has different ways of doing things, of course, right? But, you know, being us in Canada and being a global speaker, we actually were very lucky because we actually talked to a lot of uh, other speakers uh, and leaders in different countries. And this is something what they told us. They go, wow, it's amazing for you guys to become a star master in Canada. It's very, very difficult. And I can assure you, I can guarantee I tell you this, it is very, very difficult. It took a lot of hard work. I mean, a lot of people out there, they're saying, you know, of course, you know how many of us, we do tend to judge a book by its cover, am I correct? If the book exterior looks really nice, you, you might be interested to buy it and read it, right? But do you know what's inside that book? You don't, right? So, you know, our journey, it is very, very unique. You know, in Atomy, I tell you this, because we were located in Western Canada, we had so many barriers that you cannot even imagine. You know, one thing I'm going to say, you know, you probably never even heard of this. Because here, you guys got a lot of support. You do. You know, your center support you. Your sponsors support you. The company supports you so much. You know, for us, when we were moving forward, I tell you, it's a really sad story. We even had sponsors who wanted us to not succeed. Can you believe that? In Atomy. It's hard to believe because we were actually rising to become a sales master. And then when we became a diamond master. Actually, do you know why we had to become a diamond master? Because we wanted to open a center. Can you believe that? We worked really hard from becoming a sales master to become a diamond master. We pushed it really hard because we didn't have any centers in Western Canada which were teaching properly. And we wanted to set a good example because we didn't have guidance in Atomy. Do you know who our guidance was? The videos. We watched CEOs, Dr. Lee, and then we try to attend different um, you know, uh, seminars in different countries, even like the United States, and then you know, sometimes in Calgary, a different province, so we can learn more. By going to all the centers, I tell you this, it's very, very important. Because many of you, you might think, it's the same speech, isn't it? Or same content. But it's not. I'm telling you guys this. Do you know why it's not? What's more important when you come to a seminar? It's the people. Isn't network about people? It is. You know, for me, I wouldn't have learned a lot about Atomy if it weren't for the different people that I've met in Atomy. Are they on my team? No, I don't even know whose team they're on. But because I was there, I got to meet different people. And you always, I tell you this, you, know, you guys know the law of attraction, right? 
How many of you read the book or saw the video? I think there's a video version now, right? It is true. You know, if you go to a seminar and you're grouchy, you'll end up with a grouchy guy beside you, okay? <laughs> but if you go to a seminar and you open yourself, I tell you this, you'll meet a lot of people. And people will share their experience with you. You never know. Maybe they'll even help you, right? You'll learn from them. And that is a very, very important thing. So for us, you know, I, I know here, I think, um, you know, when you first started the country, you guys can all become open a center very easily. But because uh, Atomy already started in Canada, just so happened when we wanted to open a center, the rules changed. You needed to become a diamond master to open a center. Because we really wanted to support our own members moving forward and teach them properly and have the environment. That's why we, you know, move forward and really, really, you know, work hard to, be, to open that center to become a diamond master. And, you know, when I saw my wife uh, working really hard in doing Atomy, you know, I was just that supporting husband who's supporting her in the back, but I wasn't involved really in the business. And to tell you the truth, I really wasn't, you know, focused on the business or even helping her so much in sharing it. Just like a typical husband, you know, the basic support, right? I, I think you guys have some husband. You're getting my head, right? Make sure you bring them to the seminars, okay? <laughs> so what happened is, I'll tell you a really funny story. You see the dark blue there? Um, it's actually when I really started was in January 2017. Um, because I saw my wife couldn't advance. She was hitting a lot of stumbling blocks, and it's mainly due to our Canadian type of environment. So, you know, I came and I, I said to myself, I'm going to come and help her. But one of the things that, a big turning point of why I wanted to help her, I'll explain to you right now. So first, just to let you know, you know, CEO, you know, his story. You guys all heard, right? Wow, you know that... Um, Beat up van? I wish I can buy that van. You know, I'm a collector myself, so, you know, I think that's a very important van that he drove. Um, that vehicle, he was driving that around, telling people, hey, you know, you can succeed. This company, you know, just by selling this product, and then later on, you're going to be a millionaire, right? You know, think about this. Imagine yourself, if you were faced with that situation when you're looking at CEO. If someone like that came up to you in a beat up van, how would you judge him? Let me ask you. Do you think he's crazy? Right? Do you think he's real? No. Right? But that's us. We did that to it. Right? But look at it now. Did he prove it to you, all of you? Or even to those people we introduced it to? I am sure it was very difficult for him in the very beginning and what he had to do. You know, this is one of the, his stories, uh, and when I saw the picture of the van, you know, it put a little light bulb in my head, and I said, wow, interesting, you know, how this company began. So let me tell you this. You know, when I even had my first, uh, when we had our center, um, you know, look at our attendance. You can see the picture there. <laughs> so less people. It was hard to even get people to come to the center to learn, you know, or to even teach or do anything. So our attendance was horrible. You know, you need people to come and learn so then you can grow the business, right? Yeah. So we found that, you know, being Canadians, is a, the relationship was a little bit hard to create in them. So now here's a little background about me. So... I told you I'm an investment specialist in real estate for 28 years in Vancouver. So I sell things that are very, very expensive. You know, to tell you the truth, I make really, really good money doing what I do because I specialize in it. If I'm not good, I wouldn't have lasted 28 years. But think about this. Imagine me going up to somebody and now I'm turning around and say, hey, would you like to buy some toothbrush and toothpaste? <laughs> oh my God, you know, you wouldn't believe the comments I got. 
You go, are you crazy? What are you, what are you doing? You know, first thing, I still remember the first comment one of my customers gave me. Are you not making money in real estate? And I said, why? Why would you even make that judgment on me right away? But that was just one comment. I tell you, it's at thousands. To this day, I still get comments. You know, they say to me like, so, um, are you do doing better in the Atomy or are you doing better in real estate? And I said to him, why do you say that? Why do you not think that I can do both? Right, guys? <laughs> exactly, right? So you see, we don't need to make, you know, these people who make comments like that, don't worry, just disregard it. You're there to prove a point. Keep, keep moving forward. That is the key. In Canada, I tell you this, the average wage is very high. Yeah. And I'll tell you this, I thought Canada was high. Uh, recently, I was very lucky. I got to speak in Australia. Oh my gosh, when I got there, I tell you, their average wage is even higher. <laughs> it's high already in Canada, but you know, I think I would say Australia, their average wage is about 25% higher. You know, Canadians make good money already, okay? I tell you this, the average there, that means they make uh, about 230,000 ringgit per year. Is that good income? Yeah? Add 25% to that, and you're in Australia. Wow, right? You know, and I went to Australia, and I was going, okay, you know, some of my members said, hey, uh, let's go for dim sum. You know, I thought um, in Vancouver, our dim sum was expensive. No, Australia was more expensive. Yeah. So you see, because of the living is more expensive, guess what? Your food supply is more expensive. Restaurants, right? So you see, in here, I noticed that your um, monthly wage is a lot lower, right? Because your, actually your expenses are low too. But imagine if you focus on doing anatomy. My goodness, auto sales master is already a dream come true, right guys? Yeah, you guys can all see that, right? So, you know... Um, I want to tell you a reason why I'm also doing Atomy. You know, in my industry, being in a real estate investment specialist, uh, because we're in a country that has a lot of AI. You know, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Apple, they all came from, you know, North America, right? So, you know, these are the things that we know that's wiping out the whole industry. I'll tell you this, before I did real estate, um, if you guys actually get a chance just to interrupt for a bit, you know, I did a really interesting presentation uh, in Canada, and it was about the in fourth industrial revolution. If you guys get a chance, you know, please watch it. You know, it's, uh, I think, in the channel. It's Ming IU. And that one is, uh, is very interesting. It's about, a, you know, the fourth industrial revolution. First, let's look at it. You know, AI, everyone knows, and earlier. And next thing you know, Google Home. How many of you have a Google Home? You, you know, in North America, oh, everyone has one. Yeah, it, it, it makes you so lazy. You walk in there, instead of talking to your wife, and then you guys seen Tesla, right? Wow. Would you want... Oh, by the way, that's bad. You're going to lose the driver. No, no, no more chauffeur, right? <laughs> See, there goes the chauffeur job, right? Um, and then what about the smartphone? Can you guys live without it? No. You notice this. You don't even, you know, the smartphone, you take it around more than your partner. Am I correct? Yeah. And when you lose your partner, do you really care? Ah, it's okay. She, she has a smartphone. But, <laughs> but you know what? When you misplace your cell phone, your smartphone, what happens? You go frantic. Wow, you go searching like crazy. Where, what, where did it go? Where did it go? Right? You see how important that smartphone has become? Yeah, it is addiction, by the way. It is, yeah. But I'll tell you guys this. I mean, before I did real estate, um, I'm actually starting to expose what age I am, right? <laughs> uh, do you guys remember pagers? 
Raise your hand who used a pager. Sorry, that's going to expose who, how old you are. <laughs> oh, wow, not too many. <laughs> it's good. We got the young crowd here. <laughs> um, I'll tell you this. I still have my pager. Yeah, I still have it. It's still active. Yeah, because I still have customers calling me on it <laughs> from that long ago, right? So I remember when I was doing pagers, I actually worked for um, a famous company. Uh, you guys might, might have heard, Motorola, right? Yeah, okay. I actually was one of their really, really top salesmen. Yeah, you wouldn't believe it. I was like king of pagers. But you know what happened? Cell phone came. <laughs> Sad story, isn't it, eh? <laughs> well, when first cell phone came, guess what? Even me, I didn't want to use a pager anymore. <laughs> but do you know how expensive the cell phone was, the first model? Yeah. Actually, the first type of cell phone was not really handheld. It's called a transporter. It's like a suitcase size. Yeah, I have one of those at home. Yeah, it's in the garage. <laughs> and then the first real mobile one was that Motorola, right? The one that looks like a brick, the size of a brick. And you've seen many movies. You know, they use it as a weapon. <laughs> and then they cut down to half the size. Remember, ultra classic? Yeah. But do you know how much it cost for the first uh, Motorola, the stand-up, the brick size one? I remember that phone was over $5,000 Canadian for one. And people tell me Apple smartphones, Samsung, Huawei, the top of the top is expensive. I go, you guys are nuts. <laughs> you don't even know cell phone, how expensive it was before. But still, you see the evolution of technology. From pager, it can wipe it out to the big phone, and it became smaller. And then remember, the flip phones came in the market, and then also the smartphones. The smartphones kept changing. Even right now, every year, they push out new smartphones. You know, I, I know many of you right now here because, um, you know, your uh, city or even the country doesn't change that much yet, but it does, it will. When it starts changing, it's super fast. Perfect example, I tell you this, is look at China. China grew so fast. Right now, China is not the China that we know five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years ago. It evolved so fast. It pushed right through. It's like a juju train. Yeah. Actually, their trains are super fast. Yeah. Um, I'll be going to uh, Shenzhen. Okay. I thought the train is going to take two hours. You know what they told me? <clears throat> Sorry, sir. It's only 15 minutes from Shenzhen to Hong Kong. I go, what? Not two hours? No, 15 minutes, sir. <laughs> wow. That's fast. Um, so to me, I had a lot of inspiration during the anatomy, but you know, there was a critical point before I really moved forward in anatomy. Uh, when we first joined, uh, very luckily, um, I did go to Toronto to attend the success. And you wouldn't believe it. I did not know who Mr. Yoon was, which is member number one. I really didn't know who CEO Park was back then yet because I wasn't even paying attention and not interested in anatomy. But when I was there at the success, um, Mr. Yoon actually took me out to have breakfast. Do you know what mastership I was? Zero. I didn't have a mastership. But he took me out for lunch. I uh, breakfast, sorry. Yeah. And at the success, I did get to meet uh, CEO Park. And then I met the um, president of uh, Komar. So there was a lot of different people I met. And also, I was watching this success. And I was going, hey, who are these guys getting their award? Um, you see there? Three Sharon Rose Master. And I asked, what, what are these mastership? You know? Sales master, diamond master, Sharon Rose master. Interesting, this company it has these levels, which I didn't understand. It's funny, eh? So after a little while, um, now back in Vancouver, luckily, uh, I don't know if you guys ever met, was um, the brother of CEO. So it was very interesting because he came in at a later point in our journey and... Um, he actually said something very, very interesting, you know, about doing the business. 
And, and at that point, we weren't, re- I, 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 I wasn't. My wife was focusing on the business. But he said something that was so interesting about this business that it made me very, very curious. You know, in this atomy, it's a network, right? There's lineage, right? And there's support from above, right? And everything. And there's a lot of things that you sometimes think about. You like to look above. But actually, he gave me a very, very good advice. Do any of you think you can take a guess what that advice is? It's a tough one, I'm telling you. I'll I'll tell you guys right now. He, He actually said, don't look up, but look down. What do you guys think that means? Don't know, right? Are you just staring in the sky? (laughs) Dreaming and looking at the clouds? (laughs) No, no. What he was actually implying was about don't look above you at the people who are above you. Because you know what? You might think that as you're producing, you're benefiting the person above you. Am I correct? Right? You always feel that in your heart. You're thinking, hmm, the more I work, it's going to benefit them. And you know what? I don't like them. So why should I work hard? You know, with that thought in your mind already, you know what's going to happen? You ain't going to succeed. I tell you this. So what he said was correct. Look down. Take care of the people below you. Those are the people that's important. Who cares about the people above you? Yeah, you know what? You help them out. Good enough. Whatever. And it is true. Because for me and my wife, because we were rising, we were helping the people above. We saw that they were starting to get their mastership, the next one. And they were, you know, it's called riding it, right? Yeah, it's true. It's okay. We didn't really care. It didn't matter. And then one day we would go higher and higher and higher. We passed them. So that's the interesting about this company. You know, you get a lot of good advice. Like, you know, CEO's brother. That, if he, I tell you this, if he didn't give me that advice, I think inside me I might have always thought that I need to look up. And that would create a stigma in me, for sure. And I don't think I'll be here standing today to tell you guys the story. Thank you. And I tell you this, the one of the biggest turning point, you know, but I won't tell you the, the story that led to it before because it wasn't too good. But um, in 2016, um, about a year and a bit later, um, we actually tried to, you know, because Philippines was opening, and we tried to, you know, do Philippines. Um, it was quite a unique place. We're not familiar with it at all. Huge population, totally different culture, you know. But we were there. We tried our best um, to do all the sharing and everything. And then we attended the grand opening. And you know how CEO always have, the, and Mr. Yoon, they have that revival meeting. So after the grand opening, you know, um, they invited us to go attend the revival. And I said, oh, interesting. You know, I'd like to go check it out. So there we saw, um, you know, of course, CEO and Mr. Yoon. And of course, there's a pastor there and a lot of other people that attended. So at the revival, I tell you this, um, not, I'm not going to go into religion because that's a separate thing. Um, but what happened is those words kept staring at me, revival. And it was interesting. I was going, why do I keep looking at revival? And it gave me something inside me. I said, I needed to change myself because I wasn't looking at this picture right. I wasn't supporting my wife right. So there were so many factors. It actually opened my eyes. To tell you the truth, I wasn't paying attention to what they were saying. (laughs) I was a bad student. (laughs) I did graduate, though, from university. (laughs) But those words kept hitting me, and I was going, what is it implying? So, But it was important, the word revival. So after I left that, that's when I began, when I reviewed you know, my life, and it was a turning point, and I said, I think I need to change. I'm not doing the right thing. You know, I'm good in business already. Uh, I help a lot of customers that are mine become successful. 
but it was very minute to me. You know, I do do a lot of charity work um, every year before, before I even started Atomy. But I always find something was, it's too small. It wasn't getting any bigger. And that's when it hit me. I was going, you know, what if I focus on Atomy? What if I start helping different people? Whether they're in Canada, whether they're in the United States, whether it's Malaysia, Philippines, you know, I have to do it right this time. And that was the biggest turning point was after this. Even my wife realized it. She saw it. And actually, that's probably one of the reasons why you guys see me. Um, some of you actually met me before, right? When I first came to Malaysia. So that was actually only a few months after my turning point. Yeah, can you believe it? For somebody who wasn't doing anatomy. <laughs> um, that's why it's very important for all of you, if you want to master the skill and become successful, there's many ways to support yourself. You know, in life, you will always, always, the person above, they will always give you tests, right? Maybe sometime you're lucky. You might have one month, two months, three months. No, no tests. But don't worry, they'll throw you one for sure. That's, that's in the card for everyone. So I know many of you, you want to know, hey, how do I make more money, right? I want to buy another car. I want to buy a new house, right? How do I become successful? And the last one, the most important one, what is the key to become successful? It's going to be different for everyone. And I'll tell you this, there's different ways to achieve your success. You know, attending that revival was the biggest turning point for me because it actually gave me a crystal ball view, you know. You, there's, you, we have the choice. You can choose the easiest road, am I correct? Who would like to choose the easiest road? Wow, nobody. That's good. <laughs> what about that rough road? Would you guys like the rough road? No? I heard, I heard a no over here. <laughs> What about the fastest road? Wow, okay. We know what he's interested in. <laughs> but what's most important? What about the right road? How many would like to do, choose that one? Wow, see? You guys are already going to be successful. I can see it. Because I tell you this, I chose the right way to do Atomy. You know? I saw what my wife was doing. She was doing the right way. She couldn't do it. But I chose the right way to support it and the right way to do it. You know, in life, we all have a lot of partners. Don't just think of your wife or your husband. There's lots of partners in life. You know that phrase, how they have, love thy neighbor? Would you not like to be mingling with your neighbor instead of competing with your neighbor? I think you guys all know that one, right? Why would you want to compete with your neighbor? What's the point? If you guys get along, don't you know there's more barbecues? <laughs> there's more potluck? Isn't that beneficial to you? It is. Right? So that's why doing the right thing is very, very important. But I tell you this, doing the right thing is also very hard. You know, I won't tell you all the different things I had to do that was the right thing. Even just recently, there's a lot of right things I had to do. It was quite damaging, but I still had to do it because it is the right thing to do. You know, for me, um, Atomy was never about the business, and it wasn't even about myself. You know, one of the very happy moments for me was actually, uh, you know, because it was hard for a Canadian halfway around the world to create a team in, you know, Malaysia. Because I've tried it before in Philippines and we actually failed. And I won't go into details of how, why we failed. It wasn't because of us, so that's why. <laughs> um, but this time, it actually worked out. We actually created a very, very solid team in Malaysia. But because this time we focus on teaching them properly, the right way, step by step, 
and from there it grew. You know, they kept growing, and when they first got their mastership, I tell you this, I almost cried. I, I, I'd never cry. Not even sad movies. <laughs> sad movies can't even take me down, but it happened. You know, when you see your own member, it's almost like your own child. You know, when they're walking on that stage, it's almost like your kid. You know, I do have two kids, by the way. And, you know, when they graduate, oops, now I'm exposing how old I am. <laughs> when they walk on that stage, you feel so happy. I was thinking, you know, my kids are already all graduated. And now I actually have new kids. And I'm getting the same feeling again. I was going, this is incredible. You know, money can't buy that. I can't generate that feeling. Even if it's money, it won't come out. But this happened when they achieve something and they walk on stage. It made me very, very happy. You know, they've been growing and growing and they're constantly sharing. You know, when some of them, they try to, you know, stray away a little bit. You know, you have to be like a teacher and tell them, no, no, no. Stick with the core. Stick with the core and do it the right way. You know, because out of me, I tell you this. Look, it's open in 14 countries already, and there's more coming, like, you know, China, India, Hong Kong, etc. right? Sorry, I'll not speak for this. And, you know, CEO, he's on the Fortune magazine. It's telling you this is a really good company. It's being recognized around the world. And you know the Atomy business. Very, very simple. You know, the compensation plan explained it to you. There is no membership fee. You know, there's no obligation. But one of the biggest things I tell you guys all, you must set your goal. You know how every year end, you know, at the year end, you set the goal for the next year. How many of you guys do that? Okay. We just, we're in Jan um, January right now. <laughs> how about this? Did anybody set their goal? Yes? Some? Yeah. You know you should. If you didn't, don't worry. Uh, you can still do it. It's January, so it's allowed. You got 30 days allowance. <laughs> so quickly set your goal, okay, because that will help you. But I'll tell you this little secret of mine, okay? I don't know about you guys, but you know, sometimes you get up in the morning and many times during the day, sometimes the weather affects you, but not in uh, Malaysia because you guys got beautiful weather. But in Canada, because we're four season, we always get a lot of rain and cloudiness. And you know, that really drowns us. But when you wake up in the morning, you know who's the person that defeats you? It's not your competition. It's not the guy that you hate. It's not the neighbor. It's not even your boss, right? Or your partner. <laughs> it's actually yourself. You know when you wake up, you look in the mirror, it's that person that's going to stop you from moving forward. So what do you got to do? No mirrors in the bathroom, okay? No, you can't do that. <laughs> Instead, you got to look in this mirror, okay, guys? Look in this mirror. I want you to face it. Because that's the person that's going to stop you. Not your upline, not your competitor, not anybody else. It's you. You're the one that's going to define everything in your life. If you can't pass this person, I tell you this, chances are much, much less. Okay? So get in the habit, look in the mirror in the morning. Instead, compliment that person. Be a good friend to that person. Work with that person. I don't think you have a choice. <laughs> you do. That's the only person you have to work with. Most important person. So that mirror is very important. Make sure you guys know that is not a competitor. That's a lifetime partner. Duplication. I'll tell you this. This is very important. Okay? My members keep telling me they want to duplicate me. You know I'm trying to do the same. It's hard. You can't find yourself. But you can do some kind of duplication, right? You can. Don't think you cannot, but you can. By duplicating yourself first, you need to learn more. Then it'll duplicate. It'll follow through. If you understand network, it is a multiplication. Even if forget network, even in a company, 
Do you not think the company wants to hire employees with the similar type of style who are good, who work, come to work on time, who don't, are lazy, who uh, work overtime? Those are the employees they want, right? So the company is duplicating. They want that. It's the same. That formula existed always. For many of you, um, I don't know if you guys ever watched The Eight Steps of Success. There's lots of videos because that is a typical uh, MLM steps. But the, this company has a lot. And there's many videos on it. And you should watch it. Um, I was actually pretty bad because the company asked me, sorry, <laughs> to do the eight steps of success. And I actually never watched it. Wow. But while I was learning, preparing myself to do the eight steps of success, I was realizing some things. My gosh, I have been using some of those steps. You know, not all eight, but you know, at least half. So I see why, you know, I was moving forward to becoming successful because I was following these eight steps. 50% is very good, right? I passed. Yeah. So the biggest, biggest and best advice I can tell all of you Come to all seminars. Doesn't matter how many people shows up, whether it's five, which it won't happen to you guys, you know, or a hundred or different seminars. If there's different seminars in different cities, go to it. You know, sometimes make that effort. It can help. Yeah, you'll learn a lot and you'll meet a lot of people. You know, even this trip, uh, a lot of people think that I actually came here on purpose to come and speak. I have to apologize because actually I had my own intent. Um, Atomy has given me access to something that I never had before. Think about it. How do I contribute and help a lot of people in need? I was telling you that's my main goal. So I actually I've been doing a little charity work because of Atomy's allowing me to access the data. Because I had a lot of members around the world now I'm able to find the people who really need help in those countries. So just recently, this trip was not because of coming here to speak to tell you guys the road to success. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it was actually because of charity. Yeah. So um, if you can show the picture again. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So just to let you know, this is... Um, you know, I heard of them from my members, and they told me there's these two nuns, uh, they're in the outskirts of uh, KK, and um, they've been taking care of about, um, I think, 60 kids, yeah, ranging from, you know, about three to about 16. Um, they're only, like, a sponsor by a church. They get a little house, and they take care of these kids. Um, they're in transition because they're in the rural area. A lot of them cannot even go to school. And to go back home is impossible. So these nuns, they take care of them. And I was going, oh, interesting. Yeah. So they take care of these kids. And, you know, it wasn't even about them taking care of the kids. I actually felt really sad for these kids because they only get to go home once a year because it costs a lot of money for them to go back home. And I was going, wow, interesting. So I actually book a ticket to try to find an opportunity to come over here to actually go and see them and see how I can assist in helping them. You know, when I met her, I told her, you know, of course she feels I'm a total stranger. She didn't know what I was up to. And I said to her, I go, just tell me all your difficulties and I will do my best to see if I can help you resolve it. I'm using my skills, my access. So, of course, you know, I made my usual donation, you know, they needed the rice and everything, the necessity, some candies for the kids, you know. And then meeting them was something that's very interesting because, you know, you wouldn't believe it. There's so many kids there, but they only have a total of seven bathrooms in this place. So that's not enough bathrooms when 37 of them are girls. You know how long girls take in the bathroom, right? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but that's true, right? So you see, um, 
there's a lot of things that we could do and help. And, you know, I really want to share this message with you guys because you guys, too, have access. You have the power to help, you know. Every little bit matters, you know. Even for me, um, I know before the type of charity work I did, I didn't think it's very impactful. But I know I found myself right now. You know, it's given me so much, so much joy um, in doing this. And a lot of people actually wonder, they said, why aren't you <clears throat> building your Atomy business? You're so busy, um, always uh, flying around, helping Atomy uh, doing this speech. Because actually we're invited all the time to different countries. So think about it. If I'm not around, how do I build my network? It's harder. So I have to give up something to have something else. But because I get to fly around to different places and meet more people, it gave me the opportunity to find what my real charity interest is. So for all the different countries now, I'm so booked. But guess what? I'm so happy. You know, it makes me really happy. It's not the business. It's every person that I can touch, even you guys here that I get to meet all of you and get to experience coaching, I find that, you know, it's an eye-opener for me to meet you guys. And I hope it's reciprocal. Yeah. And, you know, to let you guys all know, um, you know, every time I did Atomy, I never thought of it as work. Many people think that, you know, like when you're a certain level, there's certain things you don't do. You know, to this day, um, in Canada, I still man the front desk. How often do you see a star master sitting at reception? Right? Because you know what? Star master is just a title. It's not important. It's you. You know why I like to sit in the front? I like to greet everybody because I get a chance to meet everybody. Right? It's not every day that you'll get that opportunity. Right? So even recently, actually, in Canada, I sat there, and then actually head office is trying to kick me out. <laughs> they go, no, you cannot sit there. <laughs> but I like sitting there. You know, like I said, I like to, you know, chit-chat, right? Because, you know, there's a lots of leaders, I tell you this, you know, they, sometimes they go through difficulties, and then that allows an opportunity for me to talk to them. If I sat in the front, do you think they'll come up and talk to me? No, Right? But at the reception, it's a different, different story. So one of my little things that I did during the Atomy journey that really helped me was, you know how a lot of you might say, I don't want to go to the different seminars. I made it fun for myself, like the mirror effect, right? I made sure, I said, okay, I got to make sure I get myself up and to attend all these seminars. So I started collecting. What do you think I started collecting? It was actually stars, star masters. <laughs> and it's true. Most of them back then, they were star master, but by the way, guys. You know, some of them are royal, some of them are crown, some of them are imperials, but, you know, they were all, you know, star masters back then, right? So majority of them. So it was interesting because I, I said, okay, I'm going to start collecting stars and up because that was something that I wanted to focus on, right? And usually they bring in the special guests. So I go there, I see them, take a picture, right? So if you make something fun, I tell you this, you will be able to achieve it. Motivate yourself. You know, one star master, I remember when he came to um, Vancouver, he said something very interesting. You know, he said this phrase. He says, I can do it. You can do it. We can do it. How about you all repeat after me, guys? Let's say it together. I can do it. You can do it. We can do it. 